Hi everybody and welcome to this demonstration on IAM or Identity and Access Management. So if you guys recall from the lesson, I mentioned that we need to make sure that our root user is extremely secure and not use that for our daily access. And right now I'm logged in as my root user which is the email address and credentials I use to create and set up my AWS account. So in order to show you guys what IAM is and to take you through creating a different users and groups, what we're going to do is perform a couple of tasks. We're going to create an administrators group and give that group permission to access all of our AWS account resources. We're going to create a user uh, for ourselves and then add that user to that admin group and then create passwords for the users we can access and sign into the AWS Management Console. What we're also going to be doing is granting the admin group permission to access all available AWS account resources. So basically the users in this administrators group that we're going to create will be, will be able to access AWS account information except for the AWS accounts security credentials and those security credentials can only and and should only be accessed by the root user account which should be locked away somewhere. So let's go ahead and create a administrator IAM user and group console. So as you guys can see I've already logged into my AWS management console. We're going to go ahead and go into services. We're going to go ahead and go into IAM. And just like for the EC2, this is the main dashboard for IAM. As you guys can see, this is the basic security status of IAM. And it's very important that we have a green checkbox on all of those. In, in terms of making sure you delete our root access keys, we have MFA or also known as multi-factor authentication. So it basically sends a text message in order for you to log in create individual users, groups to assign permissions, and then apply password policies. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go into users. I'm going to go ahead and add a new user. And for this user, I'm going to call it administrator. And we'll be logging in with the management console. Now, if you're going to be logging in through any API or the command line interface or any SDKs or any other development tools. For example, let's say if you have a DevOps team that will require admin access, you can also give them programmatic access, which gives you the keys, the public and private key. But since we're going to stick with the management console, we will only grant these admins access through the management console. Auto generator password or a custom one, we'll just go ahead and stick with a custom one. And here we can have either add the user to a group and right now we do not have any groups created that's why you don't see anything here we can copy permissions from an existing user i have one user already created so i can copy the permissions from this user onto this one or attach any existing policies directly so what this will do is instead of adding the user to a specific group this will attach a specific policies that should be assigned to a group directly to this user now it's not recommended that we do this, it's always recommended that we stick with creating groups and adding users to those groups. I'm going to go ahead and create a group and here's where a group dialog box comes up. Group name, I will give it administrators. And here are all of the different policies that we can assign to this specific group. You guys can see there are 404 pre-built policies that AWS comes with that we can assign to groups. Now we are also able to create our own customized policies that's a bit advanced and out of the scope of the cloud practitioners again but just keep in mind that if there is a certain policy that you cannot find which 99% of the time you will find here you are able to create customized policies and it's going to be a very cumbersome task to scroll through five 404 different policies so we can either search Let's say if you want to create or assign policies specific to S3, we can search specific for S3, or we can also filter policies by policy type that's managed by us, AWS managed, or by job functions, or by specific use. So we want to do it based on job function because, again, this is, this is for administrators. 
And if we do that, again, it narrows it down from 404 to 10 based on job function, and we want to give it administrator access. Now, if you guys click on a drop down arrow, it tells you that there it provides full access to AWS services and resources. And here is where we can see a basic JSON of what happens when this policy is applied to this specific group. It's basically allowing every action to every resource. I'm going to go ahead and create a group. So now, as you can see, this user will be added to the administrators group. And tags for users are the same thing as tags for EC2 instances, which we looked at before in terms of the function that they do. So we're going to go ahead and click on reviews. It gives us again a last time to review the user that we're creating. And we're going to go ahead and click on create user. Now once the user is created, it gives us a URL that this user can use to log into the same management console. So instead of using the root account credentials, they can use their credentials that we just created for this administrator. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and open up a new window and see if we can log into our management console as an admin user rather than as a root user. So as you, as you guys can see, the login looks a bit different as when we logged in with our root user. So here it gives us the account ID or alias, which again, the account ID is the same as my name, the IAM user, which is administrator, and the password that we just set. And if you see on the bottom, we also have the option to sign in using the root account, but again, it is not recommended practice to do that. And here you have it. So now we're signed into our management console as administrator at Qasim Shah. And again, for your organization, it would be administrator at whatever company name that you have. And since we gave it admin access, it will have access to all of these resources, the same as we had for the user. Now, if we were to create some restrictive groups, let's say people who have only access to the business applications or have access only to storage or only to databases, then they would only see those specific options. And again, like you guys saw, there are 404 different policies that AW has that we can use, that we can utilize or create our own custom policies for restricting access to certain resources. Next, there's also an option for roles. Now, IAM role is basically very similar to a user in that it's an AWS identity with permission policies that determine what the identity can and cannot do in AWS. However, instead of being uniquely associated with one person, a role is intended to be assumable by anyone who needs it. Also, a role does not have a standard long-term credentials, password or access keys associated with it. Instead, if a user assumes a role, let's say a temporary security credentials are created dynamically and provided to the user. So basically a role can be utilized by a physical person or by an application. So you can use them to delegate access to users, applications, or services that don't normally have access to the AWS resources. So if we go, if, so if we create a role, we can see all the different options that we have. We can create roles for our EC2 instance. We can create Lambda roles and we can create roles for a host of different AWS services, or we can create role for another AWS account. So let's say that you have a partner organization or let's say that you have auditors coming in that will be checking your books that require access to your S3 buckets or to information stored on AWS. You can create a specific role for them, which will be temporary because they're not part of your organization. We have a role for web identity or SAML 2.0 federation. Now SAML federation or federation is basically utilizing your users and groups that you already have within your infrastructure. Let's say if you're using Windows Active Directory, most likely you already have all of your users and groups created. So it does not or would not make sense for you to create them all over again in AWS. So this SAML federation allows you to utilize your same credentials that you have and are using within your organization, whether it's Windows or Act, whether it's Windows Active Directory or an other platform and use those same credentials and give everybody access to the AWS platform. So roles come in 
very handy in terms of giving temporary access to either applications, to EC2 instances, or to other organizations, or to people that will be temporary working within your organization that might require access to AWS for a short period of time. And policies, again, when we created the group, we saw all the policies that are available. So this just gives us a good overview to see if there are policies that we need, or if we want to create our own specific policy, we can do that here. We have two options. We can either use a visual editor or a JSON. So if you're familiar with coding, you can go ahead and code in your own policy or use a visual editor to create a specific policy for a specific service. And creating a policy is a bit outside of the scope of this course and the cloud practitioners exam in general, but just know that you are able to create customized policies. Identity provider, this is where we can create our SAML identity providers if we want to link our on-prem Active Directory users and groups with AWS. Account settings, this is where we specify our password policy if we want to restrict passwords and this is highly recommended that you have a restrictive password policy in terms of making it complicated, having it expired. So depending on how secure your environment or what type of information you organization is working in will determine how restrictive your password policy is. And lastly, this report is very useful, especially if you have a large host of users and groups and policies. You can download a report that gives you a list of all of your accounts, users, and the status of their various credentials to see, especially if you have users that are using private and public keys that are that have expiry dates. You can Use this report to see which keys have expired, which keys need to be reissued, and so on. So that's basically your IAM. For the Cloud Practitioner's Exam, it's very useful for you to be familiarized with users, groups, roles, and policies, and creating them. So I suggest you go ahead and create a few users, few groups, policies, just play around with the different configurations. And also highly recommended to read this IAM best practices that you guys see here. They have some very good FAQs which come in very handy for the exam.